Welcome to Lesson 5D, Time Marching Schemes. In this lesson, we'll discuss several types of numerical time marching schemes, including explicit and implicit schemes, forward, backward, and central time differencing schemes, and the predictor-corrector scheme. First, let's look at the goal of any time marching scheme. Let's consider a first order ordinary differential equation, namely df dt equal capital D of f and t, where f is some function of time that we're trying to predict. d is the derivative function. d can be, in general, a function of both time and our function f. And as you see here, d is the derivative of f with respect to time. In general, this equation can be nonlinear. Suppose we plot f as a function of time, and suppose this is the exact solution. At time tn, f is known. We'll call it fn, where n is just an index, not an exponent, kind of like a subscript. This point is known, and we want to predict f at the next time step, which we'll call tn plus 1. This point is unknown, and it's what we're trying to predict namely f n plus 1. This time difference we'll call delta t. In our notation, t n is the nth time step. t n plus 1 is the n plus 1th time step. f of n is the value of f at t n, and f n plus 1 is the value of f at t n plus 1. The goal in this problem is that for a known f n at t n, we want to accurately predict fn plus 1 at tn plus 1. In all our examples, we'll assume that we know this derivative function. How do we achieve our goal? Well, there are various numerical schemes that we can devise to do this. And then once we do that, we can march in time. In other words, once we predict this f, we can march to the next time step, tn plus 2, and then continue marching in time. I'll discuss the various numerical schemes. The simplest one we can think of is the forward time differencing scheme. Again, our ODE is df dt equal d. So in a forward time differencing scheme, we let df dt be fn plus 1 minus fn over delta t, and we call that dn. The right-hand side, dn, is evaluated at tn, where everything is known. We solve this equation for fn plus 1, fn plus 1 is fn plus dn delta t. Graphically, we're calculating the slope at this location, tn, and then we extrapolate that to get our predicted point, the predicted fn plus 1. Well, since this exact solution is not linear, this prediction is not very accurate. Of course, as delta t gets very small, the error decreases. Some comments, as I said, it's not real accurate unless delta t is very small. In fact, it can be unstable. This is an explicit scheme where we get our prediction from everything that's known at this time step. No kind of iteration is required. Finally, it's first order accurate as we march in time. Note that with all these schemes, once we predict f here, and then we want to march to the next time step, we're starting with the wrong answer in the first place, so the errors will accumulate. Let's try instead a backward time differencing scheme it's similar to the forward case, except we use the slope at the next time step tn plus 1 instead of at tn. Again, let's illustrate this graphically. Instead of taking the slope here, we take it here. This is dn plus 1, which is the slope at tn plus 1. We use that slope to extrapolate to our predicted value, fn plus 1. Mathematically, we write fn plus 1 equal fn plus d n plus 1 delta t. But how can we know the slope if we don't even know the function at n plus 1? Good question, Arnold. We may not know d n plus 1. So here are some comments. This scheme is implicit since we don't know the derivative at time step n plus 1. How to solve it then? If d is a known function of time, we can just solve for it. If not, we typically must iterate or approximate dn plus 1. More algebra is involved. It's still first order accurate. The advantage, however, is that it's unconditionally stable, which means delta t can be large and it won't go unstable. 
whereas the forward marching scheme can be unstable for large delta t. We can combine the previous two schemes into what's called a central time differencing scheme, where you evaluate the derivative at the halfway point, which we'll call t n plus 1 half. Again, graphically, our goal is to take the derivative in the middle point, t n plus 1 half. We'll call this slope d n plus 1 half, evaluated at t n plus 1 half. Mathematically, we let d n plus 1 half equal d n plus d n plus 1 over 2. In other words, the average of the slope here and the slope here. Then f n plus 1 is f n plus d n plus 1 half delta t. Here we have the same situation as we had with the backward difference scheme, namely we don't know dn plus 1, which means we don't know dn plus a half either. So again, we may have to iterate. Some comments. Compared to the first two schemes, this one has better accuracy. In fact, it turns out to be second order accuracy. It's still implicit, like the backward scheme, since we again must solve for dn plus 1 implicitly either with iteration or some kind of approximation, if d is not known exactly. This turns out to be stable for large delta t, but it's not unconditionally stable. It can still become unstable if delta t is very large. Finally, let's discuss the predictor-corrector scheme. Here's the procedure. The first step, use forward difference scheme to predict f n plus 1, and we'll put a subscript, p-r-e-d, meaning predicted. Just like the forward scheme, we're using dn explicitly. So our equation is the same as the forward scheme, fn plus 1 predicted is equal to fn plus dn delta t. Step 2 is to calculate dn plus 1 predicted at fn plus 1 predicted, the value that we just calculated. Step 3 is to calculate the average slope at t n plus a half, namely d n plus a half equal d n plus d n plus one predicted over two. And then step four, use this d n plus a half to correct f n plus one, and we'll call it f n plus one corrected with subscript c o r r. Again, this is best illustrated graphically. Step one is similar to the forward marching scheme. We predict this point for f which we called fn plus 1 predicted. Now we calculate the slope at that point. We call that dn plus 1 predicted, the predicted derivative at this point and at tn plus 1. Let's call this first derivative here dn, and we'll call this slope 2. Step 3 is to calculate the average of these two slopes, dn and dn plus 1 predicted. Finally, we use that slope, dn plus 1 half, which is this time, and the slope comes from step 3, and we extrapolate that slope to the corrected fn plus 1. This is our final step 4. Again, some comments. It's stable for large delta t, but like the central difference scheme, it's not unconditionally stable. It can still go unstable if delta t is real large. It turns out to be second order accurate, and the big advantage of this one is that it's explicit. We do not have to solve for d n plus 1 implicitly. Instead, we predicted d n plus 1 based on our predicted f n plus 1. All of that is explicit. Of the four schemes that we've discussed here, this predictor-corrector scheme typically does the best job, but it's not unconditionally stable. In the next lesson, we'll do an analysis similar to this, but we'll do several more slopes in a scheme called the Runga Kutta technique, which will end up being fourth order accurate. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.